Welcome back to our cargo trailer camper conversion series. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at our solar system, go through some of the install process and the options that we decided to put in this camper. So let's take a look. All right, starting from the top here, um, this is a Renogy 400 watt 12 volt system. Um, Renogy does make a variety of solar packages. So really whatever you're looking for to fit your needs for a camper, van, RV application, and as well as your budget, there's quite a different variety of options that you can choose from. Uh, right now, this 400 watt package clocks in at about $400 and it includes four 100 watt panels that you see here um, the mounting hardware cable connections a pwm charge controller and a bluetooth monitoring module so you can monitor your system from your phone now this was my first solar install so it was definitely a bit of a learning experience but a good one um, i will say that the renergy support service and learning center um, do a really good job and if you are planning your first solar install I definitely recommend checking this company out overall very easy to install so don't be intimidated if this is your first experience um, now let's take a little bit closer look at the panel install so the dimensions of each of these 100 watt panels is about 42 inches long and 21 inches wide um, so four panels fit pretty comfortably on top of our camper frame mounted to the camper roof by uh, these mounting brackets that come with the kit. So based on the spacing of the metal frame on the roof, I was kind of limited to where I was able to put the panels. Um, now, I've seen some pretty cool ways of mounting panels on Unistrut or C channels to be able to pack in more panels on the roof. And I'd really like to add another 200 watts to this system. So I might do something similar in the future. Now, how you make your connections also matters. Um, these panels come pre wired with positive and negative connections, uh, as well as quite a few of these. Um, link up connectors right here that come in a variety of two connections or three connections um, just based on how you are wiring your system. Now like I said how you wire this does matter. Um, these panels are wired in parallel which connects all of your negative leads together and all your positive leads together before sending that to your charge controller. Now this method um, amplifies the amperage value, so it adds the amperage values of each panel um, versus a series method where you would combine the voltage of each panel. Um, so like I said, each of these, and I, I pulled one out for you here, this is actually an inline fuse that I've got, but you would, you would see here where you'd make your positive negative connections, um, very easy to wire in. I've got these just tucked under here. And like I said, depending on how you wire this, you might need a few more of these. All right, so let's make a quick stop at our cable entry hood before we drop down into our charge. So just a closer look at this mounting hood here. Essentially, we've got a positive and a negative feed coming right down and this will drop down into the charge controller. So just a couple of tips here, make sure that you do um, secure this with some weatherproof sealing, not only on your hood there, but as well as below the screws and your mounting bracket so you don't get any water inside. So the next stop in our system is gonna be our charge controller. Now I'm gonna show you the schematic so you can have a better visual of what's happening here. Like I said before, this electrical cabinet is a bit smaller than I would have liked, so it is a bit messy and tough to follow. Um, so I'll give you a peek of what that looks like here. 
Okay, um, so from our roof panels, we have our positive and negative leads. They are coming down into this charge controller here. So this model here is the Adventure from Renogy. Uh, it's a basic PWM charge controller. Basically what the charge controller does is it regulates the power of your panels so that your battery is charged safely. Um, now, PWM stands for Pulse Width Monitoring. Um, when I do decide to upgrade, I am gonna go with an MPPT charge controller, which is maximum power point tracking. Uh, it's, it's much more efficient than a PWM charge controller. Uh, you're gonna get about 90% and up in your efficiency, but they do cost a bit more. Um, I would recommend using an MPPT for any system that is 400 watts and up. Now, from the charge controller, we're gonna go out to the battery but we will get out there in a minute. I'm gonna show you the rest of this solar cabinet here. Um, once the charge controller sends power out to the battery, um, we've got our leads on our terminals that come back in and essentially will come into this inverter charger. Now, <clears throat> this is an inverter charger and what this does differently than your standard inverter is, it will actually charge your batteries when you're on shore power. Um, so this has two ends, a DC end and an AC end. And from our battery, obviously we're going in to the DC end over here, um, which is also where I've got my DC appliances coming off. But our AC end will um, come from the shore power. And from the shore power line, this charge controller will determine um, if my battery is depleted, it'll determine when I'm attached to, to shore power, and it's got an internal transfer switch that will go back and forth between um, utilizing the solar system versus utilizing the shore power or a generator to recharge the battery. Um, so essentially battery to inverter, um, shore power to AC side of the inverter, and then the inverter will power the panel. And the panel goes out to all of my appliances or my receipts. So our refrigerator, our AC, our, all of our lighting, and all of our receptacles in the camper. A little bit more about this inverter. So this is a 3000 watt inverter charger from Sigineer Power. I did have a Renogy inverter charger very similar to this, but only 2000 watt, and it didn't quite do what I needed it to do for what I've got installed in here. So I had to upgrade for that extra 1000 watts. Now outside of that, um, these will work with pretty much any deep cycle battery. So flooded lead acid, lithium, gel batteries, etc. You just have to set the setting for the type of battery. Um, it does have built-in safety features such as overload trips, over temperature. Um, it's got a fast charge mode for your battery. So lots of cool features on here. It also does have a GFCI outlet on the AC side. I can't get to it because I've got it in too tight of a space. Um, only downside to these things is they are pretty heavy. So this one right here weighs about 60 pounds. Um, and that does add a, quite a bit of weight to our, our trailer. Um, so let's take a look outside at our battery. This particular battery is a Renogy 200 amp hour gel battery. Um, once this one has completed its life cycle, I definitely will upgrade to their lithium iron batteries, um, probably still in a 200 amp hour. Uh, definitely will be much lighter. Um, it's the same dimension, so it'll fit in this battery cage nicely. Um, but I will probably build something maybe that is enclosed to protect it, the, just the top of it here from some weathering. All right, so as you see, I do have my battery mounted on the outside of the camper. You will see a lot of van conversions and trailer conversions and campers that do have their battery bank stored within their camper. For me, um, I didn't really have a lot of space inside, so um, putting it outside was an option. The other piece is it is a gel battery and it does put off hydrogen and oxygen, which can be flammable in a small space. That's a little bit risky for me. So I was a little bit more comfortable of having it outside. 
Um, I did find this battery cage uh, that I welded onto the tongue here and it worked out pretty good. Um, holds the weight of the battery which clocks in at about 130 pounds so another thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about battery banks is how heavy they will weigh. Now I will say the newer technology with lithium ion batteries um, they are much much lighter and you can fit many more of them in a smaller space. So as far as the battery bank goes um, it really depends on what you're trying to power with it. Um, for me, I really wanted to be able to have my refrigerator going while I was traveling, and I could most certainly do that for quite a few hours, as well as keep our lights on, power any DC appliances such as our water pump or our roof vent fan, and maybe charge a couple of devices um, off of a full charge of that 200 amp hour battery. What I can't do is run my AC and heat or power large energy consuming appliances like a Keurig or a toaster. So really, um, you just have to factor in what you expect to be able to do with the size system and battery bank that you have. Um, most certainly you can accomplish a lot with a larger battery bank and a larger solar system. Your initial investment in that will be quite a bit more as batteries um, can be quite expensive and um, the life they do have a lifetime on them so they won't last forever you'll have to consider how many cycles the battery is going to have for how much um, energy you are pulling from the system so with that said there's almost endless opportunities in the market um, overall solar is a very easy thing to install on your your camper your camper van your rv whatever it may be that you want to add solar for i would highly recommend it um, great little option to add into these, especially if you're going off grid. So that wraps up our solar video. Um, hopefully you guys like the content. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a like, drop a comment in, in the comments feed, if you want to learn anything else about solar and we'll see you in the next video.